Welcome back. In 2004, Jumeirah Group became a member of Dubai Holding, which is a collection of leading Dubai-based businesses and projects. According to Gerald Lawless, this began a new phase of growth and development for the group. Now, in 2004, Jumeirah Group became a member of Dubai Holdings. Could you talk to us about what effect this has had in supporting the group's operations and ambitious expansion plans worldwide? Oh, Dubai Holding has been very beneficial for Jumeirah. I mean, one of the great things that's come from Dubai Holding is our overall corporate governance has been established uh, throughout the organization of Dubai Holding. Uh, Dubai Holding, under our CEO, Mr. Ahmed Ben Bayez, has put in place uh, boards of directors for each of the vertical companies that make up Dubai Holding. And Jumeirah has been at the forefront of this right from the very beginning of our existence with Dubai Holding, where we have our own board, we have our own non-executive chairman, our non-executive directors, and uh, of course a director from Dubai Holding and, a, and myself as members uh, of this board. So I think that the, the, the overall uh, support that we get from Dubai Holding has been very much in the expertise, in the guidance, in the direction that we've received over the years. And we now see as uh, Dubai begins to develop again and that we look again towards uh, new projects, we know that Dubai Holding is very interested in, uh, in hospitality development and we know that where there's an appropriate property for a Jumeirah brand that uh, we will be first in line so to speak, to make sure that we would operate that hotel. Actually, Dubai Holding has been working very closely as well, partnering uh, with the government and looking at uh, providing locations and sites to ensure that uh, we have more three- and four-star properties to uh, deal with travel and tourism that we expect in the coming years into Dubai. But as far as uh, Jumeirah is concerned, uh, we work extremely closely with Dubai Holding, and uh, I think the experience has been mutually beneficial and we've worked very well uh, with, with the parent company right from the beginning. And uh, we look forward to a, quite an amount of uh, joint expansion and development with Dubai Holding over the years. Focusing now on the group's international operations, you have successfully developed a whole host of Jumeirah properties in key locations around the world. What is the group's global strategy and what are the markets that you are targeting? Well, I say our main strategy for the, the brand of Jumeirah Stay Different, as we call it, our luxury hotel brand, is to continue to evolve and develop on a global scale and uh, ultimately to be recognised as the best global luxury hotel brand. Uh, we're well on the way, but uh, we know that uh, there are some great competitors out there and that there are other brands with similar aspirations. It's a competitive market where we believe we have the resources to compete in any of these markets. We are looking geographically already, as you rightly say, we have a very good international spread from uh, China through the Maldives, uh, here in, uh, in Dubai, of course, and uh, in Abu Dhabi, where we have the beautiful Jumeirah at Etihad Towers complex between the uh, Jumeirah Hotel and the Jumeirah Residences. Uh, plus, we will in the future, uh, in those areas, also be represented in Bali. Uh, we signed up in Mumbai in India, and we hope very shortly to sign in Goa as well. We signed contracts in uh, Muscat in Oman, in Aqaba, in Jordan. We're already in operation in Kuwait. And, uh, of course, in Europe, um, well, straddling Europe and Asia, we have Istanbul. We have Rome, Frankfurt. In Spain, we have the, on the island of Mallorca. And, uh, of course, in London, we uh, have three hotels. And we have many more developments, including uh, one coming up in St. Petersburg in Russia. So I think that you know, the future is very bright for us. Very much at the moment, we're concentrating on developing more within the Middle East region. You know, we started life very much here as a Dubai group. Then we drove the brand on it to try to establish the international credentials that we believe we needed for a luxury hotel brand. We started to expand internationally and we now believe it's time to come back into our home region very strongly, not as a regional brand, but as an international luxury hotel brand. So this is where we're heading with, uh, with Jumeirah, very much concentrating on now developing in the Middle East, in Asia and in Africa, more on an opportunistic basis in, uh, in Europe. So we'll see where that takes us for the future, but there's plenty of activity and a huge amount of interest in the Jumeirah brand. 
Now, Jumeirah Group and its properties have won an enviable list of awards and accolades over the years, particularly in relation to its status as a luxury brand. How is Jumeirah consistently able to achieve and maintain such high standards of excellence? Well, I think it goes back to what I said earlier, is that uh, each hotel is, has its own unique character, but built into that as well is that each hotel is its own business. And yes, there's lots of support, for example, in Dubai, where we have a cluster of hotels where we can combine our procurement and uh, all of our purchasing. That's important. We have certain laundries, for example, and certain services that can be run on a centralized basis. But we don't take away from the general manager of the hotel that he or she is responsible, first and foremost, for the financial performance of that hotel. And in fact, for the strategic direction of the hotel, Yes, with the guidance of, uh, of the corporate office, but very much that we, we believe that it comes back to being able to run each property almost as a, a separate business. I say almost because it's not totally, but it's very important that uh, the management teams within the hotels, within the businesses, because it's not only hotels, we have the Wild Wadi Water Park, we have a very big restaurants division as well within Jumeirah. And uh, it, it's, it's important that the bosses of each of these really feel empowered to be able to drive their business according to the strategy and the budgets that have been set for them. As you mentioned, food and beverage is such an important area in hospitality. Could you talk to us about Jumeirah's F&B operations? Yes, we believe that it's a sector that has great potential for the future. Uh, particularly when you look at the moment, we have about 114 restaurants and bars in Dubai that uh, we either operate or are within our hotels, and indeed some of them are outside our, our hotels. And we believe very strongly in developing food and beverage almost as a, as, as, as a separate entity because we see the value in, uh, in creating something unique around food and beverage. In fact, we now call our food and beverage operations of the company RNB. So that's restaurants and bars, but it's R and B so it works very well with F and B, uh, and we we see great potential to continue to develop. Either to look at some of our uh, outlets, uh, we, we we can look at third parties coming in to run them, especially if we have uh, very big named uh, chefs or celebrity chefs who would like to come and rent it. Very recently, we rented out uh, one restaurant area to uh, to Jamie Oliver, and Jamie Oliver has now come in and as uh, Jamie's Italian in the Jumeirah Beach Hotel. So we will continue in this line of always looking at what's the best use for a restaurant space because we want to make the restaurants and the food and beverage uh, an exciting prospect for our guests to have a lot of variety that is not always just like a hotel restaurant. And uh, this is something that we've managed to evolve and develop actually also with uh, a lot of support from our parent company Dubai Holding.